All right, you guys, this is 22 Questions with Love Sale Die, and today we are talking to Bex Hornell from Rig Pro. So let's go sneak up on her and ask her some questions. Hey, Bex. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. What are you up to? I'm just making a little soft shackle. Yeah, cool. Is that something you do every day? Yes, it is, but it's not the only thing that I do. Tell us some other things you do as a rigger. Um, I spend a lot of time outside. Um, we do a lot of work on boats in the marina, climbing up masts, spending some time with the seagulls. That sounds interesting. So how did you decide to be a rigger? Well, I really wanted to trade in the marine industry and um, rigging really screamed out to me because it was so diverse. We do so many different things. We work with so many different people. Yeah. How long have you been a rigger? Coming up four and a half years now. <laughs> and so do you have to be qualified? Um, there is apprenticeships that you can do to become a rigger, but a lot of people just get safety working at heights courses done and that's a good starting point. Tell me what you're holding in your hand here. I've got a piece of 3 mil Dynex and a little fid, needle fid. Ah, oh, so that's what you call splicing. Yes, yes, it's splicing. <laughs> How many splices are there? Oh, there's a lot of different splices depending on what you do, what type of rope you use and what application they're used for. So is this where you work every day? Yeah, it is. I spend a lot of my time up here in the splicing room, um, making ropes, pulling ropes, breaking ropes. Um, tell us a little bit more about breaking ropes. So this is our test bed. Um, we can pull up to 10 tonne on the test bed with the ram, and we've also got a winch on the end of it, which we use to milk big dock lines when we're building dock lines for super yachts. Wow, so you break ropes in here. Does that ever get scary? Um, it does give you a bit of a fright. Every time, without fail, I will jump every time I break something just because I don't know that it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know the brake load of all the lines you work with? Yes, with the brands that um, we use here, I have come to know most of the brake loads just because I work with them every day. So, another part of your job, you said, is that you climb up masts? Yes, I do, yep. Are you afraid of heights? I'm not afraid of heights when I'm up a mast, but standing on the edge of a cliff does still give me butterflies. So you're okay to go up a mast, but not to the edge of a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. What's the tallest rig you've been up? Um, I think the tallest mast I've been up is probably Hataris's main mast, which is about 60 metres. Ooh, that is pretty high. How do you talk to people when you're up there? Um, we use hand signals. Um, hand signals is probably the best use of communication. Otherwise, we have headsets, which are we communicate with um, people below us with, but they can be unreliable sometimes. Do you voluntarily choose to climb the rig? Yep. yep. And do you find that sometimes you actually are climbing the rig instead of having someone winch you up? Yes, yeah, there's a lot of times where we'll just have, be working on a smaller boat and we'll have someone down below just tailing our rope while we pre-climb the mast. How do you not drop anything? Well, we usually tie everything onto our chairs um, with leashes and whatnot. Some things you can't tie to your chair, so you just have to be very, very careful not to drop it. Always making sure you put your hand all the way into the pocket before you put it down. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever dropped anything? I have dropped a shackle pin once and it narrowly missed someone's head, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> Secret safe with me. Is this your tool bag? <laughs> yes, it is. It's quite the mess. And what do you keep in here? Um, most of my useful items are out now. I've got my Pulford, which I use for splicing polyester rope, um, my needle fids, pens, knives, needles. What are some other unique jobs that riggers do? Um, we really are a jack of all trades. We do a lot of different things. Um, we swage wires, we make wire stays, um, tuning masts. We fit out a lot of different masts and components as well. So we do a bit of boat building alongside the rigging. So you do a lot of work with other parts of the industry? Yep, we work really closely with sail makers to help tune the masts to make the sails look as good as they can. And um, we work with boat builders, electricians, engineers, the works really. How would you say rigging has helped you in your own sailing career? Rigging's helped me a lot. It's helped me understand how systems work on boats. I can now pretty much fix any problem on a boat because I work around issues on boats every day. I can, yeah, I think it just helps 
understand how things work a lot better. Sounds like you would be a valuable crew member. Can you tell us what those long benches behind you? This is for measuring out ropes. Um, uh, most of the work we do up here is just splicing, but we also measure out wires when we do swaging and um, crimping of wires and things like that. Do you have a favorite kind of rope to work with? Um, I'd say a Technora covered Dynex is probably my favorite, Why? just because it's probably the most high performance rope that you can get strength wise and performance wise. If you own a boat, how often should you be checking your rig? Here at RigPro we recommend that you get a rig check done every year. Um, annual rig checks are really important to make sure that your mast's in working order. Have you ever come across a rig that really needs a birthday? Yeah, every two or three months we'll get one that's in a bit of a sorry state. Um, you can really tell when a mast's been neglected. <laughs> Is it possible to come back from a state like that? Yeah, yeah, we can pretty much fix any problem that we come across. What is your next big adventure? In a few weeks I'm off to do the Hobart on the Zen. That is awesome. Is this your first Hobart? Yes, it will be. Well, it sounds like your rig's going to be in really good hands. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> we'll have a great race and we'll see you when you get back. Thank you. Bye, Beck. See you later. Safe sailing. Two questions. Oh, I couldn't tell you.